Let's go back now, if we can, to COVID. Not the science of it so much uh, as what you have to do as a country to look after those folk who are uh, put into one particular set of uh, tier structures, and that is uh, Manchester Tier 3 uh, from one minute past midnight tomorrow. Labour, later on today, will be forcing a House of Commons vote demanding a, quote, fair one-nation deal for communities facing those Tier 3 Restrictions. That was the row, essentially, uh, between Boris Johnson, uh, Robert Jenrick and uh, Andy Burnham. Uh, joining me next is Lisa Nandy, who is Labour's Shadow Foreign Secretary, a uh, Member of Parliament for Wigan, but is very much uh, behind this. Um, Lisa, do you reckon you've got the votes for this? Um, I guess uh, very much this depends on what Tory MPs in areas that are facing these lockdown restrictions decide to do today. There was a lot of anger last night on the call with Matt Hancock. There are several Tory MPs in this region who are standing up for their constituents. They are putting pressure on the government and they're making it clear that the financial support that is on offer is just not enough. When you, when you, when you saw them. what was said in that discussion last night and when you have seen what Sir Graham Brady, the chair of the 1922 committee and a bunch of red wall uh, Tory MPs are saying, you must have thought you'd died and gone to heaven. Not at all. We've got a situation in Greater Manchester where our hospitals are in danger of being overwhelmed. We've been in restrictions now since the end of July and case rates are going up. And we've got a government that just pulled the plug on discussions yesterday and walked away, effectively saying to people in Greater Manchester that they're prepared to see businesses collapse and people evicted in winter in the middle of a pandemic for lack of financial support. None of this gives me any pleasure at all. I think there are Tory MPs who've done a really good job at standing up for their constituents. There are others who signalled last night that they're going to side with Number 10 and the government over the people that they represent. And I would just urge them today to think again. We desperately need them to stand with us and stand with the people of Greater Manchester in order to resolve this. Would you have advised Andy Burnham to swallow his pride? It was only five million short of what he wanted. And to suggest that there wasn't money on the table is disingenuous. There was over 50 million quid on the table. I was told in a meeting with Matt Hancock at 4.30 last night that there was no money, that £22 million was the only amount that was now on offer, and that was for test, trace and isolate. That's money that we're effectively owed by government because the national system isn't working and we're having to take that over locally. So it's just not true to say that that money was on the table and that Greater Manchester walked away. My own council leader in Wigan, who I spoke to last night, who's been part of those negotiations, said that he's had two meetings with the government over the last week, learned more about what they're proposing from the national newspapers than he has from those conversations. And at one point they were told, we've come up with a figure, we've plucked it out of thin air, you either accept it or we walk away and you've got 10 minutes to decide. This is just not good faith negotiations and it's not the way to treat people in the middle of a pandemic. On the point of principle, and I'm not saying that that analysis isn't principle, quite the opposite, I, I listened carefully to what you were saying, but on the point of principle... Andy Burnham did not do himself any favours when he said, A, there is not a problem that warrants tier three status, but B, if we must have it, we'll accept it if you give us lots of money. That just looked grubby. I think we've been clear that there is a problem. It's the, there's been a dispute about how much hospitality is is the cause of the problem. But I very much accept that when you've got case rates like ours in Greater Manchester, shutting down pubs and bars is the right thing to do. The problem is that if you do that in a context of those pubs and bars having operated with serious restrictions since the end of July, many of those businesses will fold and many of those minimum wage workers who are still paying 100% of their rent and bills but are getting nothing like that in terms of uh, their wages will be put out onto the streets. There is no question about it. And when I put that to the health secretary last night, mm. he didn't dispute that for a moment. And did you put that analysis to Mr Burnham as well a few days ago when he was saying there isn't a problem that warrants tier three status? You've clearly just said there was. The, the issue the issue with tier three status is whether it works or not. We've we've had tier three type restrictions in one part of Greater Manchester, Bolton, for several months where pubs have been closed. They've only just reopened briefly. And what we've seen in that time is case rates still 
rising very, very dramatically. So there is a real debate with the government about whether those restrictions are sufficient. It's one of the reasons why we've said as a Labour Party that we think it is the time to have a national circuit break so that we can fix, test, trace and isolate and get control of this virus. There are some parts of the country that have much lower case rates than us, but they're still higher than parts of Greater Manchester like Wigan when we went into tier two restrictions back at the end of July. The embers are burning everywhere and if we don't get control of this now, we will all suffer. What was your reaction to Jonathan Van Tam then, the number two science advisor, when he said in number 10 in the five o'clock press conference yesterday, a national circuit breaker is not the right thing to do? That's Labour Party policy. It was a different view that, that was expressed last night than the view that scientific advisors to the government have previously expressed. I understand that different scientists will come to different conclusions. It was noticeable he didn't rule it out, um, although he expressed a preference for tier three restrictions. I guess what I would just say is that we've had this situation going on in Greater Manchester now for months and the the cases are still rising. Um, and It is becoming increasingly clear that part of the problem is that although people are trying to follow the rules, they're not at all clear what those rules are. In Wigan at one point we went into lockdown, back out of lockdown and then into lockdown again. Three rule changes in the space of 10 days And we've had over the summer the government telling us repeatedly that it's business as usual, go back to the office, eat out to help out. I think people are genuinely confused about what they're being asked to do now. And that's one of the reasons why we think a national circuit break that gives us a chance to fix, test, trace and isolate is a good idea. Do you have any optimism at all that test, track and trace will be sorted? Uh, we, we started to do it here in Greater Manchester. What's happened is that the, the, the outsourced system that was outsourced to Serco and Deloitte has collapsed, but we are taking that on locally. So they're now sending their cases to us that they can't trace. I think at the last count in Wigan, we were dealing with about 80% of their cases because they just don't have the expertise or the ability to do it. If the government would just stop handing over these large sums of money, £7,000 a day to consultants and just work with local authorities and public health directors in order to do this, then yeah, I think we absolutely could fix that system and we could do it relatively quickly. But what we've seen in the last 24 hours is a government that is actively attacking local councils, local directly elected mayors and the people that they're supposed to represent instead of working with us. I Just honestly, we're absolutely reeling here in the north of England. We just can't believe that a government would do this to its own citizens. And this morning there seemed to be a little change of tone from the community secretary. I just desperately hope that they have thought again and that they come back to Greater Manchester and work with us to help us get our people through this. But if you were foreign secretary in a Labour government and not shadow foreign secretary in an opposition party, you would govern as a national government. That is what Boris Johnson and Matt Hancock are trying to do. I I think that the approach is, is deeply contradictory. On the one hand, the government has said we can't have national restrictions. We can't even have national criteria for areas that go into local restrictions because we want to negotiate locally. On the other hand, when local leaders, whether it's in Merseyside, Lancashire or Greater Manchester, say this is what we need and why, the government says we're not prepared to talk to you and shut down the negotiations and walk away from the table. They've got to decide, do they want to work with us locally in order to get this right or do they want a national system with national criteria at the moment what they're trying to do is play us off against one another divide and rule but actually in greater manchester that will never work two-thirds of my constituents leave wigan every single day to go to bolton salford and manchester for work if you don't provide financial support to all of us you don't help any of us and that's why we're sticking together we're working together this is what we do in the north of england we do things differently here and we just want the government to recognise that and work with us to get this right. Lisa Nandy, good to talk to you. Thank you very much. That's Lisa Nandy, Member of Parliament for Wigan and Labour's Shadow Foreign Secretary.